Lisa Gormley, a nurse at the Massachusetts General Hospital Fireman Vascular Center. And with me today is Danielle Salguero. Hi, Danielle. Hey, Vanessa. Great to have you here. Thank you so much for having me. Oh, of course. So, Danielle, you are a critical care nurse within the Vascular Center. What exactly is a critical care nurse? So I work at Mass General Hospital. I work in the neurointensive care unit where we take care of a wide variety of patients. We take care of patients who have suffered strokes. We take care of patients who have had traumatic brain injury, either from a fall or from a motor vehicle accident. Okay, so those are pretty serious diagnoses. Thank you for doing such a great job taking care of those patients. Um, so today we're actually gonna talk a little bit about identifying a healthcare proxy and completing a healthcare proxy form. So let's just take it from the top and let me ask, what exactly is a healthcare proxy? Great. So a healthcare proxy is a very important piece of paper for your healthcare providers. It is a form that you fill out where you designate a spokesperson who would make healthcare decisions for you if you were ever unable to make them for yourself. Okay, so this is a really important document for me to fill out. It really is. How do I even identify who would be my healthcare proxy? That's a great question, Vanessa. So when you think about who you want to appoint as a person to make decisions for you, you really want to think about a person who would would speak up for you, who understands your wishes, who you feel very confident and trust. Okay. So who would I actually ask, I guess, when would be a good time to ask this person who should be my healthcare proxy? Now. Do it now. Do it now while you're healthy um, because you never know when something devastating is going to happen. Probably like something that you see in the neuro ICU. Yeah, accidents happen all the time. Oh, goodness. So um, what are some examples of uh, when I would need a healthcare proxy? So you would, you would need a healthcare proxy any time that you were unable to make healthcare decisions. So something traumatic, usually traumatic events happen. Either um, you've been in an accident, you've had a stroke or a heart attack. Patients come into our hospital all the time after these events. And we can save their lives in the hospital and, but, some, but sometimes it takes a while for patients to wake up. And during that period of time when they're not awake and they're unable to speak for themselves, we're always looking for somebody to speak their wishes for them. If they need to go back to the operating room for something, or maybe they never wanted us to do all this to begin with. It's really important for us to know in advance who is speaking up for you. Wow, so if I have a fall, and it's so bad that I need to go to the MGH and I'm in the neuro ICU, um, I have a, a breathing tube down my throat. I'm usually totally knocked out and not able to speak for myself, right? Exactly, exactly. Okay. So we, we, look, we look to see who, who's nearby that we, you've designated, you've, you've picked to, to speak up for you. So do you think most people, especially out there in the community, understand the importance of this healthcare proxy document? I think people understand the importance of it. I think that there's just a problem with um, people not really carrying it through and following through the process, and that, that's where we lack, and it is so important to just get it done. It really is. No, I think about this all the time because um, I've seen these forms, I've been at my doctor's office, and I say to myself, I should probably have this form filled out, and then I, I never go home and actually talk about it with you know, my friends or my loved ones. I, I know I, I, I could probably identify who I'd like to have make decisions for me, but I've probably like never done that. I've never had the discussion. Do you feel like that happens a lot? I do. I was actually just reading a little bit about this when I was preparing to come here today. And the statistics, listen to this, 90% of people say that the talking to their loved ones is really important about end-of-life care, but only 27% of people have actually done so. Another statistic I read was that 80% of people say if they were seriously ill, they would really want to talk with their doctor about end-of-life care, but only 7% have actually had that conversation. Those were eye-opening to me. Okay, so the good news is I'm not alone, but the bad news is that there's too many of us out there just not making decisions and putting it on paper as who we'd like to identify. Exactly. So these are super important points, and it's really eye-opening about what we really need to do um, as community members in com identifying a healthcare proxy and filling out this form to really have someone make decisions for us that are the right decisions if, God forbid, something happened to us. That's right. Okay, so um, what are some important pieces of information that I should be taking away um, about the healthcare proxy and this healthcare proxy form? Well, I think that what you need to, one of the most common questions that we get asked in the hospital is, um, do you need a lawyer to fill out a healthcare proxy form? And that answer is no. Anybody can fill out a healthcare proxy in your own home. 
All you need is two people there to witness it that aren't named on the healthcare proxy. So it's very, very simple to do, and we'll go through that process in a moment. Okay. The other piece of information that people um, confuse a lot as well is that they think that a living will is a healthcare proxy, and they're two separate things. And the truth is that many hospitals in Massachusetts don't recognize all the details of a living will. So really having a healthcare proxy is so important. Okay, this is really great to know because I personally don't have a lawyer, um, so I, I, I'm, I'm glad that I don't need a lawyer to fill out this form and I can really do this in my own home, in front of my friends or family that I identify as witnesses, as well as my health care proxy. Um, and you know, it, it will be a, a legal document in the hospital setting. Yeah, absolutely. That's great to know. Um, so where can I actually get this form? Really easy. You can go to your doctor's office. Most doctor's offices have these healthcare proxy forms. Um, or you can go on the internet and you can download them. Um, www.mass.gov has these forms and they also have them in multiple languages. So you can download them in your language. Um, another website is the uh, Mass Medical Society website has access to these forms as well. Come on into Mass General, we have them. Easy access. Great. Okay, so there's a bunch of different places that I could get this form. Mm -hmm. Seems really easy, um, and I think I understand the importance of, of actually filling out this form. Um, so I think it would actually be even better if we tried to fill this out um, here in this segment. So we really get to know some of the, the um, really important pieces of information. Because if I do this wrong, could this be something that is actually not valid? Exactly. If you miss a few pieces of this, that would be not considered a valid piece of paper. So we really want to go through this line by line, detail by detail, so you know how to do it properly. Okay, great. So let's actually take this time to, um, to complete this form. Um, so I guess the first thing, when I look at this uh, form, I notice that there's a um, square that actually says your birth date. Do I have to fill that out? So that is not a mandatory piece, but I would recommend you fill it out anyways. Okay, so I'll put my birth date in there. And then I see a one, and it says I, and then I print my name. So I just, I put my full name right there. Put your full name okay. in print, okay. nice and clear. Print my full name, uh, residing at, and then I can just put my street. So 55 Fruit Street in Boston, uh, Massachusetts, and of course my zip code, 02114. And then it says that I appoint as my healthcare agent. So is agent actually the same thing as the proxy? Yeah, so your healthcare agent is the person you're going to choose to make these decisions for you. Okay. Healthcare agent, one piece I want to tell to speak to about this is it can be anybody. It doesn't have to be a family member. It can be a best friend. It can be a neighbor. It can be anybody that you trust. Okay, that's probably good to know because I'm not sure if I'd like to have um, my fiance fill this out. He probably make too many decisions that I might not want. <laughs> so I might identify my friend. Um, okay, so I, I put my person's name there as my healthcare agent, and then I put their street address, their city, and state. And then, okay, so I see agent's telephone, and the H is for home, W is for work. What if I have their cell phone number? That's perfect. You okay. can just put a little C where the H or a W are and write their cell phone number. Whatever the best phone number that they can be reached at, because we're going to need this. Remember, you're not going to be able to tell us the phone number of the person because you're not. You're going to be incapacitated. Right. So you're not going to be awake and able to speak to us. So we want to be able to know what the best phone number is. Okay. So I'll put their cell phone number because I don't even think they have a home telephone number anymore. Um, and they do have an email, so I'll put their email address on. Mm -hmm. um, so there's an optional piece here. If my agent is unwilling or un unable to serve, then I appoint. Oh, I can. I can actually choose another healthcare proxy. You can choose a second person um, as an alternate. So, you know, it can be, say you want to do your fiancé and your sister. You can have them both be on this form. It's not necessary. It's not mandatory. You don't have to do it. If you only have one person, that's perfectly fine. This is just an option, just okay. in case. Okay, so I'm going to choose my best friend. I'm just going to have her name down. Um, I'm not going to put uh, an alternate agent because I really don't want anybody else making decisions for me except for my best friend. Okay, so I can actually just leave that part blank? You can leave it blank. Okay, great. So now I go on to step two, um, which states, I guess, the main point of this form. My agent shall have the authority to make all health care decisions for me, including decisions about life-sustaining treatment. And that goes back to if I have this big fall or a really bad stroke and it looks like you're doing everything you can to save my life 
and you might have to put that tube down my throat, that's, that's life-sustaining treatment? That is, and if it's something you don't want, you need to have that conversation with your person to tell them. Okay, okay. Um, so then it says, subject to any limitations I state below, if I am unable to make healthcare decisions myself, my agent's authority becomes effective if my attending physician determines in writing that I lack the capacity to make or to communicate healthcare decisions. So That's that means, really important okay. because when you're doing a healthcare proxy, that doesn't mean that this person can make decisions about you all the time. You are 100% with it today. You are in control of your health care right now. This form only gets, this form is only good when you are unable to speak to us any longer. Okay. That's really People get confused know. by that sometimes. Okay. Yeah, because I wouldn't want my best friend making decisions if I could make them yeah. like right now, yeah. only if I wasn't able to, to talk or yeah. speak. Okay. Um, so my agent is then to have the same authority to make health care decisions as I would if I had the capacity to make them, except, and here, list the limitations, if any, you wish to place on your agent's authority. What does that mean? Is that kind of like if I want to say, um, hmm, my agent is then to have the same authority to make health care decisions as I would if I had the capacity to make them, except, and maybe a limitation would be that, um, if I had a brain injury, I would say you, you can't you can't make those decisions for me. I just want to, you know, I, I don't want any further treatment. I could put that right there. You could put that right there. Okay, so any exceptions you could I put, feel. Yeah, any exceptions that you feel. You could put any maybe specific details. Um, if you wanted to, you didn't want a feeding tube. I think okay. that you could put that there. Okay. Make all decisions about me, but please don't give me a feeding tube. Okay. I think Do that, I have to put that there? You don't. That Honestly, a lot of people usually don't fill out that section. Okay. They, most people leave it blank, but it's nice to know it's there just in case. Yeah. I, I think the first really great step is that I'm completing this form. Just I'm doing it. identifying a healthcare proxy. They, um, we're having a conversation about my healthcare wishes if in the event I have this devastating injury. So I think I'm just going to stick to the proxy and filling out this form. And the exceptions, we're just going to leave blank. Okay, cool. Um, I direct my agent to make health care decisions based on my agent's assessment of my personal wishes. If my personal wishes are unknown, my agent is to make health care decisions based on my agent's assessment of my best interests. So that means, you know, this, this speaks to the importance of having this conversation it does. about if I have a massive stroke, would I want to spend the rest of my life in a wheelchair um, requiring 24-7 supervision and care. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So it's important, that's why it's important not just to fill out this form, but to have those conversations with that person. What would you or what would you not consider acceptable way to live? I mean, these are really deep thoughts. It's no wonder why people, you know, have a tough time, you know, having this conversation, mm -hmm. but it's so important because I know my wishes if I was were to have a catastrophic event. Um, and you know, didn't really want to move forward with um, any kind of life-sustaining treatment. But yeah. my family probably doesn't know that. Yeah, you gotta I, make them I know. My best friend doesn't, and that's the person I'm actually identifying as my healthcare proxy. Okay, so um, step three is just for me to sign. I yeah. sign it. You sign this form, and most importantly, is you date it. The okay. day that you're signing it, you date it, and that really makes this form valid. Okay, so I put the month, the date, and the year. So I sign it, and I put the date. And then it says something here, complete only if principal is physically unable to sign. So would that be like if I actually couldn't use my hand already? Exactly. So if you had a stroke and it affected the right side of your body and you were right-handed and you couldn't sign your name, you would, you would be able to direct somebody else to sign your name with your consent um, to this form. Okay. It would just, I would have to be able to make my own decisions. I would have to kind of have capacity, which is the kind yeah. of official term. So um, I have to be of sound mind and be able to physic have maybe a, a, a slight disability that doesn't allow me to sign to a form. To sign your form. Okay. All right. And then step four is this witness statement. So we, the undersigned, each witness the signing of this health care proxy by the principal or at the direction of the principal and state that the principal appears to be at least 18 years of age, of sound mind and under no constraint or undue influence. This is very official, yeah. but I guess what they're trying to say here is I, I, have, I need two witnesses that aren't my healthcare proxy 
that are just witnessing me signing this form? Exactly. It's a mouthful, but basically that's exactly what it is. We are witnessing that you are appointing your girlfriend to be your healthcare proxy and it is your signature. And okay. that is all we are witnessing. And we, as long as we are not named on mm -hmm. this form, anybody can sign it. It doesn't have to be a healthcare professional. It can be anybody that you wish. Okay. So I guess the big thing, I, I can't like fill this top part out and sign it and date it and then maybe the next day bring it to my doctor's office to have two witnesses? No, if you want to do that, you should bring it to your doctor's office and complete the form all right there so they can watch you do it. Okay, so the entire form has to be completed and right witnessed. you know, at that moment with yeah. everybody there. Um, okay, so I need the two witnesses there when as I'm filling out this whole form. Okay. And the other piece that is important as well is that nobody else can fill out this form for you. Only you can fill out this form. We've had people ask, well, I know what he wants. Can I just fill out the form for him? You can't do that. It has to be the, the you that fills out this form, and you sign it, and then they witness it. Okay. And this date right here, this bottom date under, under four witness statement, right above the signatures, witness one and witness two, there's a date in there. It's kind of hidden in there. Yeah. That date is very important as well, because if that date is not there, the form is not any good either. Thanks for bringing that up. I probably totally would have missed that. So yeah. there's actually... Two dates, two dates that I need to put on this, um, as well as my birth date, but then two, um, the month, date, and year in two spots on step three, and then again on step, step four, four because it's the same day. Yeah. Okay. This has been so helpful, um, Danielle, to go through and really identify the whole process about identifying a healthcare proxy and completing this form. So thank you so much for your time. No, thank you for going through it because we see it all the time. You know, we really do. It's so important to get this done and have these conversations. All right. Thank you again. So everyone out there, make sure that you are identifying a healthcare proxy. You're acquiring this form either at your doctor's office or online at www.mass.gov or on the Massachusetts Medical Society's website. Uh, there's actually multiple languages that you can um, acquire to fill this form out in. So make sure that you go online today. Um, I guess the other big thing is make sure you have this conversation with the important people in your life so that you don't end up in the hospital in a life-threatening situation and not have anybody to make the right decisions for you. Thank you so much for watching. Stay tuned because after this segment, we'll have the uh, PowerPoint presentation uh, where you can actually review the slides and see this form and its completion. Thank you so much uh, for watching and take care.